welcome back. One of my viewers asked if I can showcase how we can filter one list in SharePoint or Excel, doesn't matter, uh, by another list, which means we have one list containing, uh, for example, um, schools, no? one, two, three, and then we have another list which contains the teachers. No? And I want to filter now um, the teachers um, list by the schools list. So we have those IDs for the school and then we need to save those IDs also in the teachers list so that we can um, filter that. No? And let's see how we can do that by using two SharePoint lists and uh, a Power Automate workflow. But first, if you like the video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have fun. Okay, as you can see here, I have uh, two SharePoint lists. No? I have one being the parent list, which in my case is uh, just a number of schools, no? school one, two, three. Uh, very uncreative with the naming, but that's not the point. And uh, the important part is that, of course, the ID column, no? which is a standard ID column from uh, the SharePoint list. And next I have also the teachers, no? which is like a parent-child uh, list. But keep in mind that um, these are not connected by a lookup column. These are manually um, populated with the ID of the school. So as you can see here, I have seven teachers and uh, last name, first name, subject that they teach, and also they, their uh, school ID, you know, which is one, two, two, these are in the same school, three, four, five, six. And now what I want to do is, with Power Automate, of course, is I want to say, give me all the teachers that are in the schools from this list. So I have here uh, also their ID for, for the school, which is populated here. And this is the ID of the teachers, no? which is the, again, the internal ID column of that SharePoint list. So what I want to do is I want to say, you have this parent list. You have one, two, three ID uh, for the schools. So filter this table based on, the, on those IDs and give me the list of the school, uh, of the teachers which uh, teach on those schools. No? So if I would do this manually here is similar like if I would go here and select filter by and tell here one, two and three. So what I would get is a list of four teachers no? with their IDs one, two, three, four and their school IDs one, two, twice and the three. So how we can do that in Power Automate? Before we continue that, just for you to understand what I'm trying to do is um, something similar like the famous SQL joins. No? We have four of those, inner join, left join, right join, and full outer join. There are also some others, uh, but uh, these are the four, four main joins. So what I'm trying to do here is a left join. So we have the table one, which is the schools, and also the table two, which is the teachers. And I'm trying to grab this part here, you know, which is all the, um, all the schools, and then what belongs uh, to that uh, ID, you know? what from the teachers, what belongs to this ID. So it's something similar like the left join that we do, but not 100% because uh, a join would mean that we bring those two data tables together in a new table or maybe in the same in one of those same ones. And uh, then we end up with a completely new table list, whatever, um, containing uh, the all the data from the table one and then you know, what uh, is similar to the IDs from table one, from table two into that one. You know? I hope that was understandable. I'm going to share this link anyways uh, with you so that you can check it out on yourself. But as I said, we're not doing um, a new list or table at the end. We're just trying to find uh, how we can do that filtering in Power Automate. Then if you have the IDs, it's very easy to pull the data from table two and one and then write them in a completely new SharePoint list. No, that's not a big deal. Okay, so let's take a look how we can build this um, Power Automate flow. So as you can see here, I've already created it, so we're not going to build this from scratch, but we're going to go thoroughly uh, through all the steps. So to make it easy, I created a manual trigger flow, since I don't know if this would be the case, um, or it, I don't know if there will be a case where you need to make it automatically triggered, um, but it's up to you. No, the, trigger, uh, the trigger you chose is up to you, of course. And what I'm doing here is I am initializing two variables. First var parent items and um, second var child items. Keep in mind that parent is the parent list 
and the child is then the teachers in this case. And here I'm initializing those uh, two arrays. So let's close those. And what I'm doing next is I want to get all the uh, items from the parent list. So as you can see here, I'm not doing any filter query. I'm just grabbing all the items because I want to know what IDs I have uh, in this list. So now we're going to dive into a couple of apply to each loops. Um, let me know if you are familiar or know any other better way to do it. This is um, based on my search and ideas, the only way I found out how to do it. What I'm doing here is I am bringing all the IDs from the um, items that I get from the get items parent list into this array variable. And so it's going uh, all through all these items from the get items section and writing the IDs into this uh, var parent items array variable. And since I want to see these items, no, because here I always have to go through all, through all the items in the preview, uh, I'm writing these in the compose display var parent items, just, just for seeing purpose, nothing, nothing more. So next, um, we are going to use two apply to each loops. The first one is uh, when we um, do another get items for uh, the second list. And what I'm doing here is I'm filtering the query where the school ID, this one here, is equals the ID from the parents list, no? from this get items here. That's why it's creating a loop. No? And I'm getting then a list of a list of items. In this case, would be this list of items, this filtered one. And this list of items, I want it then to be saved in a variable. No? So because it has to go through each of those items no? from the second list, it's creating another apply to each, which I've called collect second list IDs. And I end up with a new with a second variable filled out with the child items. And what I'm doing here is the same like this one here. I'm just displaying the second list IDs so that I, I'm sure that I have that array with uh, those uh, items. Okay, so as we saw, we have here three schools with IDs one, two, and three. And if I would filter the school ID here in the teachers list, I will get four items no? with the ID one, two, three, and four. So let's test this out and see if this uh, is um, what we're expecting. The flow ran successfully. And this is the initialization here, nothing interesting there, get items. Here's the apply to each, and that's what I meant. Now, if I can go here, I cannot see all the values at once. That's why I prefer to do a compose action after this apply to each uh, actions. So now I can see here I have one, two, three um, IDs, and this is for the var parent, parent items. No, one, two, three, which is correct. Next, I want to do this uh, bigger loop here, and I'm going through all these items. And what I'm doing here, or where I end up here, is with a list of IDs from the second list, not from the uh, child list, the teachers. And as you can see, I end up with one, two, three, and four ID. And this is the one, two, three, four ID, similar like if I would um, filter the list by myself. So what you can do from here is up to you, and uh, maybe you do a proper join where you bring the items from the schools and the teachers, maybe the new lists, or maybe this school teachers um, example is not uh, very helpful for you, or maybe not to your case, you can imagine something different, and uh, you can continue from here. The important part is that you now have, have the IDs that you need, no? because that's what you need for the item creation, and you need to get that information somehow. And now you have the IDs uh, with this array, you can do an apply to each and grab those items from the second list and then write them in a third list. No? And the same with, uh, with these IDs here. So then it's up to you what you do, what you do with this information from here on. But um, yeah, I hope you liked it. This was a short video just to explain to you how you can do something sim simple like this. And uh, if you did so, please make sure that you um, give a thumbs up to the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching. Catch you the next one. Bye.